month end, 31st of May in a very cold Bloemfontein. It's nice to have you for devotion and hopefully the word is going to warm you up. On Sunday, we spoke about Pentecost Sunday, where the Holy Spirit is to be predominant in your life and in mine. And I want to share with you a couple of thoughts about this, where especially when the Bible tells us in Acts chapter 1 verse 8 that we will receive the power to become His witnesses. And that power is that dunamis power. And so often we think of the dynamite explosive power. 3,000 people being saved, born again, and all the miracles and things. But it's also that diamond dynamo that keeps you going onwards and onwards and onwards, leading and guiding you into all truth. The spirit of truth is promised to us in John chapter 16, verse 13. And I read to you from NIV, and it says the following, But when he, the spirit of truth, the Holy Spirit, comes... He will guide you into all truth. He will not speak of his own. He will speak only what he hears, and he will tell you what is yet to come. He's going to tell you what's going to come. I want to encourage you that the Holy Spirit is not a once-off boom experience, but an ongoing experience encouragement, daily power to keep you going day after day after day. In Acts chapter 3, we read that Peter and John are on their way to the temple and there's the crippled man begging for alms and the miracle of him healed, where Peter says, silver and gold I don't have, but what I have I give to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Rise up and be made whole and be healed. And the healing of this crippled man causes such consternation amongst all the authorities of the temple and of Jerusalem that Peter and John in chapter 4 are taken captive and now they appear before these officials, these elders and the rulers and the teachings of the law. And amongst them was Annas. Now, not so very long ago, Peter was warming his hands in the garden, the forecourt of Annas' house when Jesus was taken captive, betrayed by Judas, and he denies knowing Jesus three times. And then, of course, the cock crows, and he runs away, and he weeps bitterly. Caiaphas is also there. And these two guys were instrumental in having Jesus brought before Pilate, ultimately crucified. Now we see that the spirit of truth, the Holy Spirit, is the predominant factor in Peter and John's lives, and they stand up to give an account when they were asked, what is going on? Who healed this man? What, why all this consternation? And in Acts chapter 4, verse 8 onwards, I read to you the following. It says, Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, now, I, I'm a visual person, so I can almost imagine not so long ago, less, just less than two months ago, he was hiding himself away. Now he's boldly standing up and he says, rulers and elders of the people, if we are being called to account today for an act of kindness shown to a man who was lame and are being asked how how was he healed? Listen to Peter now, and almost I can almost see his finger saying, They know this. They know this. You and all the people of Israel, it is by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified. Well, this is a bold Peter, who you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead, that this man stands before you healed. There's, he, he's got some gumption, man. He's got something happened to him. Something took hold of him. The spirit of truth dwells within him. And now from I don't know him to it's you and pointing the finger, the Holy Spirit giving him the words to speak. Peter and John were 
uh, admonished to not talk about Jesus anymore. And of course, they said, you can't stop us. And they go back and they join the believers and they report to them what had happened. And then all of a sudden, Peter, John, and all the believers that were gathered together, they all prayed. And the Bible says in Acts chapter 4, 23 to 31, that the place was literally shaken. Here comes the dynamite power of the Holy Spirit shaking that place physically. But here comes the dynamo part. And they spoke the word of God boldly. That's what Pentecost is all about. That's what the Holy Spirit does. Gives you that power to stand up in front of your accusers, to take a stance for Jesus, and also to speak his word boldly. Prior to that, we were cowering little scary Christians that didn't know what to do. Paul says the following in Romans 8, 14 to 15, he says this, for those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. And this is exactly what Peter was doing when he was led by the Spirit to point his finger and say to you guys that crucified Jesus. The Spirit you receive does not make you slaves so that you live in fear again. Rather, the Spirit you received brought about your adoption to sonship. And by Him we cry, Abba, Father. The Holy Spirit being predominant in your life gives you the courage and power to live a life to its fullness in glorifying Jesus. Have you been filled with the Spirit of God? He's in you because you're a Christian. Allow Him to take total control. Father, I pray that you will have total control of my life and all the viewers who are hearing my voice and seeing me. Take control that we may speak your word boldly. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Speak to you again on Sunday. God bless.